So away we go for two clubs who laboured in the second division last season. A real thrill for the new season to come around and the referee for their opening game, Roger Milford, one of the real characters on the refereeing circuit, his ninth year on the Football League list. Millwall have had to change from their normal all-blue strip to the change strip of yellow and black. It's sure to be a brisk encounter, this. That's the style of the two clubs. And it will be helped, I would feel, by the morning rain, which has really slicked up the pitch. And there's more of a feel of mid-season about this than the first day of the season. Terry Herlock's header. For players like Herlock, who have battled away in the lower divisions, this is a very proud afternoon. George Lawrence played in the first division with Southampton. And it's Lawrence who jumps again and prods it on to Teddy Sheringham. And Lawrence with the first shot for Millwall. And not a bad effort either. With some 75 seconds played. And Lawrence looking to make an early mark on the new season. Doors. Andy Gray, it's an interesting pass for Price. McInally as Thompson slipped and the rookie defender was bailed out by his goalkeeper then. McInally's task was made much easier by a loss of balance by Dave Thompson there. So it was a clear shot on goal, one that Horn hauled in well. Trying to line up Herlock, but Cowan's read it. As did Dawes with the interception from McAnally. Sheringham is a very thoughtful front man, as well as a goal scorer. Lawrence trying to burst between two opponents then unsuccessfully. Salmon. No wall for their part. Looking composed. Briley as the flag stayed down. And an inquest in the Villa defence led by Alan Evans and not, it must be said, directed at the linesman. It was Herlock's prod forward and Briley beat the square back line but didn't beat Spink. Thompson miscued with the header, Andy Gray is the player hoping to capitalise on that for Villa. Lawrence aiming for Sheringham but only finding the head of Keown, but Herlock finds Sheringham and Herlock again. Lawrence outside him. Cascarino, Sheringham and O'Callaghan in the middle. Briley, McCallaghan may have called there, Briley seemed to let it go. And Millwall, just at the time where that attack was losing its purpose and direction, to get a free kick. Corner off McAnally, whose tactic of rushing away, believing that that might influence the referee, didn't work that time. It might have worked once earlier in this game, I think. But the corner properly given in Millwall's favour. Taken by O'Callaghan. Cascarino! Tony Cascarino has already put his trademark on the first division with 20 minutes gone. And he will go down in the annals as the scorer of Millwall's first goal in the first division with a header from some range. And some 7,000 Millwall fans who have made the journey to the Midlands from South London already have a special memory.
So Cascarino, the player who came initially into the Football League with Gillingham from non-league football for a most unusual transfer fee, a set of tracksuits. When Gillingham first saw his potential, he moved on to Millwall. He's back with the Republic of Ireland as well, and uh, that's not going to count from McAnally, who was hauling Thompson back. Well, Jack Charlton called him back right at the last into the European Championship squad. He made a couple of appearances too in West Germany in the summer. So life gets better and better for Tony Cascarino. Oh, well, there's a mistake by a rather nervy Alan Evans. Sheringham finding doors. It's Cascarino again. He scored again. This is incredible. for Cascarino. Evans was caught out. Ian Dawes saw the opportunity to get forward and cut it back perfectly for Cascarino, who I don't think hit it totally cleanly, but it was well wide of Spink and just inside that far post. And Millwall are telling the first division that they have arrived. John Doherty, the manager, said it was the perfect fixture for them, really, against the team that they'd beaten twice in the second division last season. The perfect opening game. Well, there's still a long way to go in it. But they lead Aston Villa by two goals to nil, and here comes George Lawrence again. And Tony Cascarino's head must be buzzing. Players always have their thoughts and hopes for a season. Their dreams for what might happen when they play in the first division for the first time. Well, Cascarino has played just over half a half first division football he scored twice Lawrence has seen a lot of the ball but not to any purpose that time and it's the other number seven involved Paul Birch Andy Gray's onside Horn's got to come I would think that would be a penalty it is and Villa through Andy Gray may be taking the first step back up the ladder. Horn had to come. Gray, I think, was happy to look for the penalty, but he got it. Andy Gray, that is, because it's Stuart Gray now presiding at the penalty and scoring 2-1. It's a rip-roaring start to the first division season at Villa Park. We've had just half an hour, we've had three goals and some of the home team's morale restored here by the calmness of Stuart Gray. And we'll see now a measure of Millwall's composure. Both their victories, incidentally, over Villa last season were by two goals to one. But there's an awful long way to go here. And I think, without uh, putting the mockers on the rest of the afternoon, you do sense that other goals are in the offing. Oh, and uh, 
Dawes and Horn between them getting into a right mess and it's left Makadele with the equaliser. Dear oh dear. Delight for Alan Makadele. Desolation for Dawes and Horn. Well, Ian Dawes has only been a Millwall player for a couple of days and maybe that explains this dreadful episode here from the Millwall viewpoint, but not for Aston Villa, who have made up the ground that they lost to Cascarino. 2-2. We've had a minute of time added on by Roger Milford. Well, First Division football is back in this quarter of the West Midlands in exhilarating style. Not perhaps from the coach's viewpoint. Tony Cascarino pounced twice inside 22 minutes for Millwall, but Aston Villa, certainly under Graham Taylor, would never lay down and die. First of all, Stuart Gray's penalty, and then Alan McAnally pouncing on a dreadful defensive error to make it at half-time at Villa Park. Aston Villa 2 Millwall too, tremendous stuff. Aston Villa having come a long way along the comeback trail in this game, looking to go even further. Graham Taylor very disappointed that Aston Villa didn't win the second division championship last season when they were very much favourites in every sense for it. But Millwall came strong at the end, seven consecutive victories at one point. And uh, Aston Villa just with a score to settle here, and what a dramatic way it would be to settle that score if they can really come back from two down to win. That's plenty of firepower on offer still from John Doherty's side. Cascarino! <laughs> Nigel Spink showed his experience then because he was able to check his natural impetus forward to be in the right place to pluck the header under the bar. We see John Doherty there doing the pointing and Frank McClintock, a familiar face to Arsenal fans around the world. Captain of the double winning side in 1971. Now the assistant to the cigar smoking John Doherty. Birch. Gage wanting the return pass from Cowens, who obliged. And it needs just a touch, and it's not there. First of all, from Thompson, and then beyond him, from David Platt. But that was the Gordon Cowens that we knew so well here for so many years at uh, Villa Park to set it all up by finding Gage, who delivered the cross. Millwall from the dead. And away from the den here at Villa Park. Millwall giving every sign of lasting the distance a little bit better than Aston Villa. The fist of Spink and off the line by Price. weight of numbers and then Sheringham heading for goal and Price the rescuer for Aston Villa it's a case of what Roger Milford adds on for stoppage time it's only a matter of 20 seconds nothing to separate in the end the two top clubs in last season's second division but the greatest satisfaction surely for Millwall even though they lost the two goal lead given to them by Tony Cascarino Villa replying with Stuart Gray's penalty and then Alan McAnally's Equaliser just before half-time. But Millwall's first match in Division 1, it's brought their first point 